Hi everyone, I want to talk about how your circadian rhythm can keep you energized and young. Now, we're not talking about something that you do as a dance, but, although that's very good too, but your circadian rhythm can affect all kinds of things. And it's your body's natural time clock. Did you know you even had one? Yep, it's in all of us. And when it's out of whack, which is caused by staying up too late, partying too hard, not that any of us still do that anymore, or eating late night snacks, staying on the computer, all kinds of stuff, it can affect your circadian rhythm and just kind of set your brain all out of whack and speed you up for premature aging. So if you are trying to avoid looking too old before your time, this is one thing you can really, really work on and it makes a difference, not only in how you look, but how you feel. And by aligning your body's activities with your natural body's time clock, it can do so many great things. So what does this look like? It means getting a lot of sunlight early in the day because that turns off your clock for sleeping and gets your body thinking about, well, it's time to get up and do whatever you're going to do. So if you're taking your dog for a walk, for example, it doesn't take very, very long to set things in motion but uh, a walk could do it, or even if you don't have a dog and you're not going on a walk, just raising the blinds to get sunlight coming into your room makes it just makes a huge, huge difference. Another big thing is eating at regular times. Now, there are a lot of fads and trends out there, but I always ask the question, what did Mother Nature intend? What did our ancestors really do? And they had this thing called hunger pangs that would let them know when they were hungry. And so as humans, we do generally tend to feel those hunger pangs if we are still in touch with them, which a lot of us are not because we're, we have all this food available to us anytime. So some of us will just be snacking throughout the day. But if you let your body go through natural cycles like hunger, generally about three times a day, you will tune into your body's signals of hunger. So there's a reason why breakfast is called breakfast, break fast. And it is all about your body recovering from being asleep overnight and not eating maybe as long as 12 to even 18 hours. Intermittent fasting is a trend right now. And some people really can't go very long, as long as some of these trends would have you believe is, is correct, um, without eating. Or they get what's called hangry, a combination of hungry and angry. And our blood sugar drops and our bodies, just some of us, do not like going more than eight or 12 hours without eating. So being able to tune into your body's natural signals is just so important for getting your circadian rhythm back in sync. If you get moving in the morning, whether it's through um, some kind of activity, whether it's running, walking, uh, yoga, some kind of activity that gets your heart rate up, that really sets you up for feeling energy in the morning when our brains are really most in tune to going through our natural and daily cycles of eating and resting. And by the time night comes around, then you are naturally feeling sleepy, especially if you put forth some effort early in the day with some kind of workout. Overall, this will improve your energy level throughout the day. And then when it's normal and natural to feel tired toward the end of the day, as long as you're doing things like not binge eating and, and watching TV or being on your computer uh, until the wee hours, then your body will normally try to slow down and give you signals that it's getting tired. Now, some of us take naps, some of us don't. My father never took a nap. He said he just really couldn't ever bring himself to do it. He was never tired during the day. And because I look a whole lot like him, I'm thinking maybe I have that gene too, because try as I might, no matter how much I've stayed up late the night before, how little sleep I've gotten, I cannot take a nap during the middle of the day. But some of you may be different, and I'd love to hear in the comments how you deal with your energy ebbs and flows. And if you do some of these bad habits, share them now. Let's get them all out. And, you know, maybe we as a community can offer tips on how you uh, stay focused and avoid some of the bad habits that get our circadian rhythms just out of whack. It's really... Uh, I would say it's not a hard thing to do in terms of getting your rhythm out of whack, but it's also not a hard thing to jump back on the track and get things in alignment with however uh, is right for you. It's so much a matter of just tuning into your body's signals through your stomach, through your brain, and all of this can help to increase your longevity and your energy levels and just uh, be able to handle <laughs> raising a black lab from puppyhood. <laughs> And part of this keeping your circadian rhythm in alignment is all about keeping 
your brain healthy as well. Because if you were getting enough sleep, if you were getting enough of the right kinds of foods at the right kind, at the right time of day, then you're gonna find yourself feeling happier. And all of this, of course, contributes to good brain health and avoiding, hopefully, Alzheimer's. Lots of studies out there showing that activity, in particular aerobic activity, keep the Alzheimer's of aging that we sometimes attribute as being normal, but they really aren't, not in all cultures of the world. But there's so much that you can do to stay on track and to avoid some of these diseases that we think are a normal part of aging. They certainly don't have to be. All right, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below about what's working for you, what isn't, what more you'd like from me in terms of future videos that we do, because this is all a work in progress. All right, everyone, thanks for watching so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one. Gotta run.